Hello folks and welcome to the final Stranger Things card walkthrough and in my opinion this is the best card of all three. So I start by cutting some white cardstock down to match my 6x6 card base. Then I'm going to use ice spruce, weathered wood, pumice stone, vintage photo and tattered rose distress inks for my background. Here I'm just applying weathered wood to my glass plate and just using some water to spritz over the ink. Then I take my cardstock into the ink to collect that colour and give it a dry with my heat gun. I keep repeating the same steps, either adding more layers of the same colour or adding other coloured layers until I'm happy with it. Every effect that you create is always going to be different, it's always going to be unique and individual. And isn't that the beauty of it? Next I'm spraying some water onto my fingers to gather those water droplets and to flick them onto the collar. Wait 5 seconds and then dab away any excess water. Give it a dry and you'll see some lighter coloured splattered effects adding texture to the background. I've chosen to use the Imagination Crafts Vintage Diamond Stencil and I'm going to work into that background some more texture and contrast. Using some of the same colours, I'm going to blend those inks through the stencil. I'm changing the placement and direction of the stencil, but remembering that in order to create contrast, you need to leave some space on the background untouched from this step. Then I do some more droplets on top of this layer of the ink to keep it in tune of a rustic and not perfect style. I wanted the droplets to have a bigger impact than they did, so I used water on the cloth to press through the stencil to create a more dramatic effect, you know, because experimenting is fun. It just helped lifting some of that colour away. Make sure to give it a good dry before moving on if you're happy with it. Next I take my Lawn Fawn String of Lights die set and run through some white card for the light bulb bases. I 
I then continue on to the vary colours for the top layer of the bulbs and use some black for the metal caps. Then I start sticking all the light bulb elements together with my trusty Cosmic Shimmer Glue. So I've just placed my selected bulbs on my card in a rough order while I die cut some wires for them to hang off. Next I'll be using the Tim Holtz tree line die and cutting two of them out of white cardstock. You'll see that I try blending with a brush before using the watered ink techniques. I just wanted a messier and scarier vibe to them, not just a pretty blend. And I'm bringing the same inks back out and using the same techniques as before to apply layers of colour. It's important to remember to keep drying your work if you prefer it, before going back in for more colour, otherwise it will blend instead of layer up. Through lovely experiment and coincidence, the ink kept on travelling to the treetops. Once I dried them, I decided to work more depth and colour into them by going in with my blending brush. I then added vintage photo to balance some of the colour from the background into the trees, but in a more direct way. Using the Yvonne Creations Wild Boys alphabet die and some red card, I cut out the first part of my sentiment. I then realised how the red bulb and text seemed a bit more lost than the other colours and had the epiphany to turn the trees into a more horrific direction. A simple blend of barn door distress ink made all the difference. Using the beige card you see used in the light bulbs, I created the last part of my sentiment. I trimmed the black card down to font size and glued the letters in place. I started sticking the wires and bulbs in place with the consideration of creating a sense of depth. You can see the larger bulbs are set forward and put on with foam pads second to the other row so that they can comfortably overlap to add the depth. And I placed most of the smaller bulbs to the back or edge to continue that dimension.
Here I'm carefully selecting which trees to keep and trying to cut a natural base of land at the same time. Think of it as a sloped incline or hillside. Now I carefully switch the trees over as not to match the layer of forest underneath. I want it to look as randomised as possible. Whilst considering the overall composition, I place the letter S as a space representative for where the rest of the word will follow. I glue down the tree line, spreading the glue to the ends of the branches and place it just off the card, keeping space for the sentiment. I then use foam pads to layer the tree edges. And these then create tree depth, but also a more inviting canvas and leading your eye into the centre. Now I flip over my project and trim off any excess using the edge of the cardstock as a guide. I spend a minute or so arranging the sentiment and spacing, then continue by embellishing the hello within a banner characteristic. At this point I love how much difference that's made and I think it adds contrast and that edginess. I stick it in place using foam pads to raise it and glue Stranger down flat to the base. So I apologise here as the camera cut out for no apparent reason, so I have found the replacement footage from part 1 Stranger Things video. I use double sided tape around the edge of my card and one piece across the middle. I then partially peel back and fold out tabs to help with the placement onto the card. This allows me a couple of tries as it's easier to wiggle it free if I should stick it down wonky. But if you have placed it correctly, press it down in the centre and peel the tabs. And I am very excited to share with you my favourite Stranger Things card and walk through part three. Thank you for watching folks. Feel free to leave a craft or Stranger Things comment and share any of your own crafty makes. Thank you folks and until next time, bye. Oh shit, pumice stone. <laughs> okay.